Talk with the Sign Industry Podcast, brought to you by Van Ladder and Signs of the Times Magazine. Today, I'm with Alan Hubbard from Pro Image Design in Traverse City, Michigan. And we're going to talk to him about uh, how he got into the sign industry, what he likes about the sign industry, how he's grown, and what's coming up, possibly. So, Alan, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Hey, I, I've i been cruising through your website. Um, for those of you that want it, it's uh, proimagedesign.net, Inc., proimagedesigninc.net. Um, you've got some really great looking pieces up there. Those are really impressive. Um, Thank you. you you've come, how, how did you get into the sign industry? Let's start there. I, I know a little bit about it because I read the about section. Um, but from your, from your advantage point, from your viewpoint, what, how'd you get into the sign industry? I guess it was probably a lot by, um, almost kind of by accident. I always, as a kid, always um, had a pretty good um, talent for drawing, natural talent, skill for that, um, painting, stuff like that. And I was always intrigued by, uh, um, my dad had race cars growing up in a trucking company and the guys would come over and, and paint the trucks. And I always um, had an interest in that and thought that it was, that it was pretty cool. And uh, um, with my dad having race cars, he had plenty of uh, banged up fenders for me to <laughs> practice on. So some Rust-Oleum paint and some some brushes from the hobby store uh -huh. kind of got into it and uh, pretty much self-taught myself all the way um, through a lot of where we're at today. Yeah, it's yeah. a big learning curve. But you, For sure. but those mistakes that you made along the way, you've learned a lot, I'm sure. So yeah, you moved into you got the bug, obviously, and um, how, where'd you start the business out at? I mean, did you start in your garage, your basement? You know. Yeah, so it was it was kind of a basement thing. Um, <laughs> I was I was early twenties and uh, um, lettering trucks. Uh, bought my first. Gerber 4B, um, sold a snowmobile to get some down payment money and leased yeah. it to uh, to That's be able hilarious. to cut some vinyl letters. And uh, I'll never I'll never lease equipment again. I learned <laughs> that one right away. But yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, just lettering trucks for people, and people need things done, and I guess not afraid to be in, saying no and going for it. Yeah, it. it as sign guys, we find ourselves a lot saying, yeah, I can do that. And then mm -hmm. you're like, how am I going to do that? <laughs> so, yeah, it makes for lots of sleepless nights. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so what, what did you do to um, take that next step? What did you notice was happening with what you were doing to, to grow and take that next step? Was it your design work? Was it your customer service? What, what was it? Yeah, so I, I think a lot of it was when I started out doing it, it was a, a side job for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, worked at a um, cement plant uh, delivering blocks with a crane truck. So I got uh. some crane experience right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, worked in excavating and um, did the stuff on the side. Uh, then got to a point um, just a few years into it that, that, um, frustrated at work and decided, you know what, I might as well make a go of this. And uh, about the time my wife and I got married 25 years ago and uh, and started doing, you know, making it happen full time. Um, first couple of years were pretty lean. She worked in insurance and helped support what we weren't making. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I guess surrounded myself with some some guys that uh, that knew the industry um, one of my best friends is a, um, he'd been in the industry and lived just down the road from me to where we moved to over by Traverse city. And, uh, my landlord actually, actually introduced me to him. And, um, he'd been at that time, probably 30 years in the sign business, worked by mm -hmm. himself. Uh, and he would buy his vinyl cut. So I started cutting vinyl for him and 
it give me, I think, a little bit of comfort level to uh, work with Doug to know, hey, there's another guy here that if I want to take on this project, Doug's got my back. I yeah. got his back. He's got my back. So uh, that and a welder fabricator, Kenny, who's passed away now, learned a lot from him. Um, just having those guys that you know, whether you can do it or can't do it, but knowing that um, guys got your back and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, you learn when, you, there's no school that we can go no. to, to be signed people. I mean, there's absolutely nothing. It's just, you either are born into it because your family is, has got a sign business or whatever, or like you or myself, we kind of stumbled into it because somebody we watched doing it. And we thought, Hey, that looks cool. I, I, I get the whole thing about taking something on and, you know, not knowing if you're going to be able to do it. I, I took on a project once when I first got our Gerber cutter, as a matter of fact, uh, to do 20 banners, uh, three foot by 10 foot banners. We were working out of the garage or out of the basement. And I actually took all the pictures down from one of the walls and made some, you know, kind of monkeyed around, made some stretch points. And uh, yeah, uh, my wife and kids were doing all the weeding and I was doing all the sticking. So but we got it done. You know, you learned a lot. You learned a lot. So um what what is it that you like about the sign industry? What is it that keeps you going all the time? Yeah, so I I think um, a lot of us are, you know, like a lot of variety. Um, I think a little inherent ADD with all of us. Yeah, uh, the, <laughs> definitely plays yeah. part of that. But uh, probably the biggest thing is is you never do the same thing twice. That's it's right. It's always something new. Um, uh, we have the equipment, our CNC machines, our lasers, our um, digitizing equipment, uh, printers. We can make just about anything. And, mm -hmm. and you know what, if we can, our motto is if we can, if we can have fun and make money doing it, why not? You just said the key word, fun. Yep. Yeah, that's our, one of our core values, yeah. number nine. Yeah, that's yep. number nine. Yeah, that's one yep. of the things I ask myself before I do anything. Is this fun? If it is, then I'm diving into it. I, I'm sure. looking at some of your stuff here online, and it's just really impressive. I mean, uh, the global asphalt solution sign. that Normally, I don't like blue lights in signs or blue faces. That, that one actually looks pretty cool. Well, thank you. A lot of different layers to it. Yeah, that one's, uh, yeah, that's that's one of those ones you, you engineer it about three quarters of the way, then you figure out how to build the rest of it on the shop floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope you make out in the end. Yeah, so do you plan that far ahead to where you do all your drawings up front, or do you just kind of sketch it on paper, hand to the fabricators, say, build this? Yeah, so we, we've, we've, uh, we make, we take our engineering pretty far now. Uh -huh. Um just because our we're um, uh, we're right at twenty employees, wow. and we work out of two shops. Uh, we're about an hour and a half apart, but um, we've been fortunate enough to bring on some 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 really talented people um, that play a key part into the the engineering and the processes. We've um, our shop up north, we've got five guys working there and they can actually kind of build on the fly, if you will, mm -hmm. just because they're so involved. But down here in Traverse City where there's 15 of us, we have to have a lot of those drawings complete. A lot of that stuff has to be vetted out and uh, before it goes to production, otherwise it just flops around in the shop. So, yeah, a lot of questions um, back and forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're able to, um, uh, Kirk's the guy that joined our team um, a little over two years ago, and he was uh, 30 years in the industry, moved up north and, uh, and, and come to work with us. And, and he's been really good to have on board to be able to, he, he thinks like the rest of us, he thinks in how's this going to get built, does a great job with engineering. And even to our designers, they're, they're now thinking with the, um, the build in mind. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that it helps. helps like a lot. Yeah, it helps. It helps a lot. I I find out I can design better knowing how to build and install a sign um, than I would have, you know, years ago or whatever. Sure. And you and I both have been in the industry a while. So, well, hey, we're yeah. going to take a break real quick and we're going to come okay. back. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about what you're doing and where you think things are going. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. The Van Ladder Bucket Truck simplifies your sign installation and service work. A winner of the ISA's Innovation Award, Chariot Bucket has a rotating fork system with an assortment of super useful accessories, giving you an extra set of hands at the job site. And with six different outside compartments and a huge project area inside, the Workport Box is a traveling warehouse. No more running for parts. Finally, all electric van ladder operates without the vehicle running, giving you a quiet day's work without stinky fumes. You can check it out at www.vanladder.com. Hey, this is Eric, and we're back with the Sign Industry Podcast. I'm with Alan Hubbard from uh, Pro Image Design Inc. Dot net. <laughs> I got it right that time. I have to write stuff down. I you talked about ADHD earlier. I've got it bad, and so I have to write everything down in order to remember it. So, yes. um, one of the things that uh, that is really a, a big wall, I guess you could say, that the sign industry is coming into is how are we going to replace all the people that we have working now that are getting older. Um, you had mentioned something about, uh, you, you've got some younger people working for you. So what, what is it that you're doing to attract the younger crowd? Yeah. So a lot of our younger team members, um, I think there's three of them now. Um, they range anywhere from 21 to, you know, mid thirties, but we have, we've had, uh, four interns that have all come to work for us that were either going to engineering school or design school and uh, um, all four of them have now chose to come work for us because they uh, <laughs> they got the they got the bug they they, they love yeah they love our culture they love building things they like uh, nothing's ever the same um, and um, it's 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 great working with that younger um, crowd to see them get excited and for them to have a, um, I guess, showing that passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it's got... a it's a big issue coming up. Um, I spoke with uh, Mars Bravo out of L.A. Crazy name, I know, but she's got a company uh, that she's got started and she's going along with. And one of the conversations we had is about bringing kids in somehow. You know, finding the kids that are looking for a job when they get out of high school, not necessarily college, but high school, that have some type of artistic talent, but they don't necessarily have the means to go to school or the want to go to school. Maybe school doesn't, you know, uh, agree with them. Um, those are perfect candidates for the sign industry. Um, so we're we're trying to put some ideas together to get that get that started. You you had mentioned that some of the interns that you had were going to be going on to like engineering or design school. Um, what, what is it that hooked them knowing that this is fun and we have something to do new every day and I don't have a lot of debt to pay later. Is that, that one of the keys? Yeah, I think, I think the, the younger generation is very cognizant of uh, the, the, the student debt program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, and and I don't think they want to be there. I think they look at the trades and what other options there are out there. And, and, uh, I think they see, they see opportunity out there. Uh, some of them actually were, had, had gone through internships and realized that the field they were going into was really not what they wanted to do. Uh, uh and, um, and they, you know, worked a couple of years here at the shop and decided, you know what, this is, this is what, really what I like doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, whether they stay here for, for uh, a long period of time, or they decide that it's, that 
you know, it's another facet of what we do here that they really want to focus on. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, everything from, you know, driving truck to crane operation, to welding, to engineering, to design, to, um, there's a lot of different things that, that you can do at a sign shop. Uh, and we're just started in the process of developing a, um, apprenticeship program. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So we're working with Michigan works on that, um, developing, uh, I think we've got three of them right away uh, that would be like what we call our clean vinyl production mm -hmm. um, that we do. We got our shop broke into, we call it the clean shop, and then we got the fab shop. Um, and then uh, we got, you know, a sign fabricator um, outline that we're looking at. And then we're also looking at an installer um, uh, program, which would entail, you know, obtaining a CDL, uh, a sign specialist license. Um, uh, we're a UL certified shop, so all of our fabricators have all gone through the UL course. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are all things that that we began putting into position descriptions to be able to show them that hey, if you stick with this, this is where you can be in five years, ten years, twenty years, and you know the just because there's not a lot out there about our industry it's not like you can sit there and go well hey i can make x amount a year working here or there mm -hmm. so we can spell that out for them give them some obtainable goals and they're helping us put programs together to be able to um, measure progress evaluate them and help them grow through the industry that's that's amazing that you're putting that together um it's that's been the entire thing in the sign industry. How do we get these kids introduced? You know, there's all kinds of stuff out there. People are trying, um, and it works here and it works there, but it doesn't work for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So there's got to be something. I mean, like the construction trades, they've got the ABC school. You know, they'll hire a labor guy to come in and, you know, man a shovel. Um, and if it's somebody they want to keep, they say, hey, we've got this school called the ABC school where you can go learn how to be a carpenter, how to be a welder, how to do this, how to do that. And they take and put these laborers, these kids in there and that's how they get them. We, I, we need something like that in the sign industry. I think it's, I think yeah. that would be the key. Yeah. I listened to a, a podcast. Um, it was actually Mike Rowe was on it uh, and he was talking about um uh, their foundation and and they were interviewing him on how to uh, the same problem they had was from a company who was in the uh, plumbing industry mm -hmm. in the in the in the person had mentioned that that their their industry was very light on new people coming in and that how do we you know engage these new people and and what do we do about our industry being that way and and he shed a little light on it that it's not just our industry, it's every industry. Right. Yeah. If we look at it from a broad perspective, but he had mentioned, you know, the more we talk about it, the more we leverage social media and engage people into mm -hmm. that, the more we can get their interest. Um, having manufacturing day uh, where they bring kids in, we've done that. That kind of got interrupted with the COVID uh, Right. thing but getting kids in and seeing what we do and having everything set up is is uh really piques a lot of their interest mm -hmm. yeah it's it's i mean we've got like you said you've got guys leaving that have been there for 30 years they they don't want to work forever you know how do you right. replace how do you replace somebody with that much experience i mean you know it's nuts so, yeah yeah what what is it that you've got that you're looking forward to doing in the future? What do you got coming up that you're thinking in the back of your head? Yeah, we're we're uh, we're, we're adding on to one of our shops um, so that we because we're kind of maxed out with uh, the amount of square footage we have now between the two locations. So we're adding on to actually our original location um, to be able to uh, run a crew out of that shop it's about 35 miles away and we have a handful of people that all work that originally worked there to begin with mm -hmm. um, 
that have interest in working there uh, in kind of giving us a, a custom fab shop that oh. we can take some of the custom projects and not so much the channel letter projects and the, the mainstream type stuff. Yeah, the meat and potatoes. <laughs> right. Keep that in the other shop or into the other two shops and then focus on some of the custom stuff and, you know, kind of incubate some projects. Architectural exteriors we're finding is really big. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, fabricated um, pergolas, canopies, awnings, um, getting into doing more of storefront design and um, ACM panels. We've done a handful of jobs with that. Uh, just with the restrictive zoning ordinances, it's, it's you know, your sign can only be so big, but they yeah. can't make you tell how cool your building can look. <laughs> exactly. And if you make your building a landmark, people know what you do. It's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, because signs forever have been landmarks, you know. Hey, yeah. go, go down the road and turn at the Texan cowboy or whatever, you know. Yeah. So, but mm -hmm. I would like to have you back sometime, maybe this uh, coming fall or something. We can Perfect. catch up, see where you're at. How's that? That'd be great. All right. Well, sounds good. Uh, hey, thank you very much. You get give your give your uh your website address and who you are and let people know what's going on. Sure. I'm uh Alan Hubbard from Pro Image Design. And uh website is proimagedesign.net. You don't need the ink, but it'll work both ways. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that down. So all right. Well, thanks, Alan. I appreciate your time and thanks for being on the show. And uh I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Likewise, Eric. Have right. a great night. Yep. Bye.